Uh, well, I'm joined now by George Galloway, the MP for the Anti-War Party Respect, and we hope in a few seconds uh, to be joined from New York by David Frum, the man who coined that phrase, axis of evil, when he was one of President Bush's advisers. Um, George Galloway, to you then, first of all, um, of course, you heard President Bush say that you must, not, you must understand with clarity the threat Iran provides to world peace. It's a pretty big statement, and he's, he's pretty clear on that one. Well, of course, Bush and Mr. Frum, when he arrives, and the other crazed neocons are the people who told us exactly the same thing about Iraq. And that turned out to be a pack of lies, which has landed us in the mother of all difficulties. And they want to repeat the story now about Iran. The best uh, evidence that can be prayed in aid is the United States' own intelligence agencies who have said that Iran is not developing a nuclear program. Israel doesn't like that, Mr. Frum doesn't like that, the neocons don't like it, but these are the facts as adduced by America's own intelligence agencies. And when I see George Bush standing next to a Prime Minister, Mr. Olmert, who has hundreds of nuclear weapons illegally held, undeclared, not subject to any treaty obligations, thundering on about a country which his own intelligence service says it doesn't have any nuclear weapons and isn't trying to get any, it, it, it becomes surreal. Okay, uh, let's turn to David Frum. I hope we've given you a chance to get your mic on there, uh, David Frum, yeah, to yeah, hear so some of that. Yes, we had a little transatlantic <laughs> cable trouble. Uh, Mr. Galloway speaking with his customary good manners and um, unsullied integrity. Uh, and um, I know he has many, many We good could always talk about your integrity. Uh, you killed a million in people in Iraq, so we could always just, talk about your integrity. Just let's listen to David Frum's uh, answer to your it, 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 allegations. Mr. Galloway, it's always the manners and the integrity that you're not sure of, and tonight we see the problem is going to be with the manners. Um, uh, what, what, is, uh, what is going on on the president's trip um, is that he has to face this tremendous danger uh, from Iran uh, that is putting at risk um, the tremendous progress that has been made in Iraq. I mean, Iraq is the key to American thinking in the region, um, and uh, there's been great progress there. And the president needs to make sure that uh, Iran d does not continue to support the violent elements in Iraq and that the progress made by the surge continues. You heard Mark Regev there saying um, that the Iranians were clearly behind the army of Hamas and Hezbollah, supporters of the most nihilistic elements in the region. But these are two guerrilla organizations who are armed with Kalashnikovs, so it doesn't take much to arm them. Israel, on the other hand, is armed with 200 nuclear weapons, and the United States is physically occupying Iraq and sailing its warships off the coast of Iran. So just to clarify, you're not disagreeing with that statement. You think Iran probably is behind the army of these organizations. Well, these, and the, violence these in Iran, people possibly. have 40-year-old Kalashnikovs. I know that because I've seen them. I've stood beside them. And your reporters have too. This is a canard. These liars that you're interviewing over the transatlantic cable are the people responsible for telling us the lies about Iraq which have killed a million people. Why do you treat them so seriously and with such, uh, such veneration? They're proven liars. David, from... Probably, uh, yeah. probably, we probably were taken seriously because we pay our own bills. Um, no difference being made in George Galloway's mind between Hezbollah, Hamas and the State of Israel. Well, I mean, his sympathies are, are notorious, as, as are, of course, um, his associates, as are, of course, his business interests. Isn't the point, though, as we heard at the end, that uh, at the moment the U.S. administration is in danger of punishing a state without any evidence whatsoever of nuclear military activity? Well, that, that's not sorry. That's not quite right. Um, that what we uh, it, the and national intelligence estimate said that the Iranians had closed down their um, their military nuclear weapons development program, but it also acknowledged that Iran continued to enrich uranium that could be used in this way. And I think one of the things that is a real flaw in the NIE, and one of the things that has raised a lot of concern throughout the world in Europe, um, has been that it seems a little bit gullible of the um, intel U.S. intelligence communities to take the Iranian claims at face value about what they want this uranium for. Um, well, we can believe that we've got a little bit. We can believe the American intelligence, or we can believe I'll, I'll the people the who told us the lies about Iraq. I mean, how many wars are we going to sleepwalk into? Well, how many how many wars are we going to allow these crazed? neocons, but th this is who are, big, by the way, on the payroll of the Zionist lobby in the United States. He's talking really about paying the own, own bills. I really wouldn't this use man, payroll this, if I were man, you. <laughs> this man is a notorious bag man for the Zionist um, lobby. In George the Galloway, States. this is big rhetoric, but if you come back to those specific concerns, for example, that actually uh, some of that intelligence, the intelligence report was quite gullible. 
Well, I mean, who are we to say the United States intelligence services are gullible? Not only is there no evidence that Iran is not developing a nuclear weapon, the in American intelligence has told us that the evidence is that they have abandoned it. Now, you could go on to discuss why Israel is allowed to have nuclear weapons, but Iran is not. But to propose war, which is what Bush is in the region for, war against a country that his own intelligence service says doesn't have nuclear weapons, in the service of a country which has hundreds of nuclear weapons illegally held, undeclared, and subject to no international it, regulation. David, yeah, David, uh, from uh, George Galloway. I, 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 as I say, if I were Mr. Galloway, I really wouldn't use the word payroll because on this uh, side of the Atlantic, we do have the First Amendment and people can, can respond accordingly. But you're welcome. Uh, here's time. I, here's what I say. Actually, there is, there, is, um, there is actually very little possibility of a U.S.-Iranian conflict, and that has been subsiding. And one of the things that is really um, a fascinating question about the direction of the U.S.-Iran relationship um, is that, there, that since the publication of the NIE, there have been a lot of voices in the United States, um, including some of those so-called crazy neocons, including myself, who have said the United States should be proposing a more open relationship with Iran, um, should be proposing now to um, have direct co contacts, preci precisely in the knowledge that the real impediment to a closer relationship is the Iranians themselves. They profit from this conflict. And when uh, it, it was only just recently that the head of the Iranian state, the real head of the Iranian state, um, said that he would not accept any kind of direct connection with the United States. It's important for the United States not to look but to like... Uh, I'm oh, sorry, the intransigent party here. David it is Fermi, Iran that requires this conflict. In that, case, in that case, if that is what this is all about, why would President Bush, on his first trip to Israel, on the first day of a Middle East peace process visit, kick off by pointing the finger at Iran and calling it a threat in the past, a threat in the present, and a threat in the future? Why is that well, conciliatory? They had just buzzed American warships. I mean, one of the things that is a real mystery about Iranian behavior, and, and you saw this with your, um, with your own Royal Navy, is uh, at, moment, at any moment when things look like there might be a promising turn uh, to the Iranian-Western relationship, there is a, an attack, of some, some kind of violation of international law, some kind of kidnapping has happened to the British, um, some kind of um, buzzing of American warships has happened recently in the Gulf that makes it impossible. Um, and, uh, the, and, and even if it's true, that we have less to worry about from an Iranian nuclear program than we thought. It doesn't mean there's nothing else to worry about. There's a lot else to worry about. I, 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 think, I, I, well, I, I, I think there's a point of agreement here. I think that there's very little chance of a United States attack on Iran. George Bush has 300 days to go. The neocons are on their way out. They're lame ducks. But there's every possibility of an Israeli attack on Iran. And I suspect that's what's being discussed in Tel Aviv this evening. George Bush and the Israeli government, which itself has hundreds of nuclear weapons, are planning an attack on a country that doesn't have nuclear weapons. That's what's really going on in Tel Aviv, if you ask me. I'm not sure if we'd call that consensus exactly, but on that rare note, um, we'll leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you both very much.